Hello everybody. Yes, I am taking this uh, opportunity for introducing our uh, beloved Professor Dr. Professor Dean, Dr. Nenem Patil sir. He has already been here from Karnataka National College of Hindi and MD Secretary for Human Bangalore. And uh, right now he is the Professor of Psychiatry, J.M. Medical College, Jalgaon, Consultant Psychiatrist, KLD Hospital, and MRC Bangalore, sorry, Jalgaon. Right now he is the President of Indian Psychiatry Society, Karnataka Chapter, and he is the PG guide and portrait teacher and examiner, member of viewers and member of ethics committee, board of college and member of ethics committee for PhD, member for the advisory committee, ASIAMR, the ICMR, Honorable Editor and the Honorable Director for ICS Karan First State, and he had the recent president, Deccan Secretary of Association, and he was the president of Indian Association of Private Secretary Karnataka. The awards and recognitions what you have having is Teachers of Teachers Award at CLE University in 2018, Best Teacher Award of CLEU Jain Medical College, Distinguished Psychiatrist Award during 2014 of Caravan, LGT HR Oration Award of IPS Karnataka, Dr. Mangalwadi Memorial Oration Award of IMA Hubli, and others like uh, Resource person in conferences, CME, workshop publications in national and international journals, and uh, he runs his clinic at Monaco Center, Ashwini Medical Center, Krishna Devaraya Sarkar, Delgaon. Welcome, you, sir. Yeah. Good morning again. Uh, this will be basically clinical presentation. Uh, since it was supposed to be not meant exclusively for uh, psychiatrists and neurophysicians, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. To the extent that it can be understood by uh, practically lay persons, this is one of the things which uh, edited recently, which was done some time back for a public awareness program. Actually, parasomnias are basically neither hypersomnias nor hyposomnias, so something other than this, either more nor less. So, somnos is sleep. So parasomnia is something that happens somewhere when there is no increased sleep, no decreased sleep, but during sleep. Try to keep only those things which are of importance clinically and for practice rather than uh, putting everything which comes under the rubric of uh, parasomnias. Like uh, in the morning, uh, we, have, we heard Dr. Hudid listing all the parasomnias. I am not going to talk about all parasomnias because they are not very, uh, very common and we don't come across those things in our clinical practice every day. I am 100% sure that all of us here have experienced one or the other parasomnias at some point of time in our life. If by chance there are any couple of exceptions here who have not experienced, then definitely they will say that I have seen this in one of my family members. It need not be in practice. They are so common, basically. They basically disruptive sleep-related disorders. They disrupt sleep. They are unusual behaviors. They are not usually what behavior we see. Uh, they are not there. They occur during arousals either from REM sleep or partial arousals from NREM sleep. The ability of the sufferer who has parasomnia to remember what has happened is not there in NREM related sleep disorders, uh, parasomnias. And in REM 
related parasomnias he can recall. Generally, by and large, we have seen that parasomnias worsen with stress and anxiety. So, some of the most common parasomnias which come across in the practice are night terrors, sleepwalking, sleep talking, bruxism, nightmares, hypnogogic, hypnopopping, hallucinations, sleep paralysis, and sleep apnea syndrome. I am not going to talk because now it has gone into pulmonologist's regime. And uh, they are doing a lot of work in this. Though it is one of uh, the parasomnias, we, we don't generally deal with that because they deal it, uh, with uh, sleep apnea syndromes, obstructive sleep apnea syndromes, much more than what we deal with. So this is a basic, this thing, the sleep cycles, depending on this, the parasomnias have been sort of classified. Coming to the first one, like for example, night terrors. Number of times you get a patient in the clinic uh, who says that, look, this person gets up in the night, sir, he's screaming, shouting, he's extremely scared and we try to wake him up, he doesn't wake up. He is so confused even after 10-15 minutes, he is a little disoriented. Later on, he goes back to sleep. And next day morning, when we ask him what had happened, he doesn't remember. This is a classic way patients generally present with night terrors. These are recurrent episodes of abrupt awakening. Suddenly, if somebody is very happily, comfortably sleeping, suddenly he wakes up. So basically, NREM stage 3, stage 4 disorder generally occurs in the first third of the uh, night's sleep. Like for example, if you sleep at around 10 o'clock, probably it is likely to occur around 12 o'clock or so. <coughs> Usually starts with a scream. And suddenly, intense fear and autonomic arousal, unresponsive to comforting. This is important to differentiate it from nightmares. <coughs> Attempts to waken, as I said, is difficult. No recall. Usually may last about 10-15 minutes, sometimes only a few seconds also. Confusion prevails on awakening. Causes severe distress to the person who is experiencing night terrors. Basically occurs because of the incomplete arousal from slow wave sleep. Sometimes what happens is the more problematic thing is the person tries to escape. He tries to run around, jump out of the window starts fighting and sometimes the partner who is sleeping next on the by the side may feel the pinch of this somebody may try to uh, strangle somebody or somebody try to hit somebody some of these things happen and there are celebrated cases uh, that have happened at least in the west not reported in india that the partner has been killed and the person has been uh, tried in the court for uh, murder and uh, has been acquitted after proving that this happened during night terrors. And a conclusive proof requires to be given in such circumstances. So a partner may get uh, injured or something or he himself may injure trying to jump out of the window or he doesn't understand during that time. He is not fully awake. More common in children, fortunately, by adult life, a lot of people get away from this. 30% at least, 30% children at least have one episode of night terror uh, during their childhood. About 2% adults, like all of us, about 2% of us, and most of uh, people who develop this and have in adults, adulthood, have history of having night terrors in children uh, during their childhood. During the stress, during the stressful times, uh, these definitely occur more frequently. If there is a comorbid psychiatric disorders, they of, often co-occur with that particular disorder. Usually the disorder would be either anxiety or depression. So if you are going through a very bad patch of uh, problem in life, for example, for students, it may be 
examination or a relationship problem or something. And during that time, you may expect uh, night errors to, have, to occur more often. Cause could be genetic because it has been found that uh, uh, the night errors happen quite frequently in families. Irregular sleep habits, stress in children, fever can also precipitate night terrors. Another thing is people who work in shifts during stressful times also are likely to have night terrors. The usually children recover by adulthood, others a chronic course, basically a clinical diagnosis requires to be confirmed by a sleep uh, Test reassurance is the best medicine for these people. Reassure, reassure, and reassure. Minimize triggers. If somebody is drinking alcohol or using some other drug or drinking a lot of coffees during uh, daytime or using tremendous amount of uh, nicotine during the time, maybe he can uh, try to change that. Safety of escape routes, like for example. You may lock the window so that he won't jump a window without uh, a railing or uh, a, a door that leads immediately to steps. He may fall down or something may happen. Uh, these are the kind of things which uh, we may try as a safety measure. Medication generally, the two medications that have been by and large uh, found to be quite useful are clonazepam and paroxetin. Um, Peroxetine, a lot of people have uh, reported that probably even a single dose of peroxetine may uh, make wonderful uh, recovery from night terrors. Generally, earlier we used to give uh, tricyclic antidepressants because by and large they do well with uh, NREM sleep related disorders. But peroxetine subsequently has been found to be more of a favorite with a lot of people who uh, practice sleep medicine. So, if an EEG is taken or uh, during the in a sleep lab, this is exactly how you can decide that a night terror has occurred. Sudden burst of EEG, delta discharge suddenly gives away to the stage three NREM sleep. I, I couldn't get this uh, picture right. This is a, basically a video of how uh, it happens. Sorry for that. But this is uh, this is one of the uh, sleep lab uh, videos. Next comes is somnambulism. Uh, a lot more uh, people have experience with somnambulism. Episodes of rising from bed during the first third of the night during deep NREM stage 3 or stage 4 sleep, walking, washing, dressing, even making tea and drinking. And uh, they don't remember. They, they do all these things. And uh, similar thing, a few of us noticed when uh, one of the very popular drugs amongst non-psychiatrists is Zolpidem. And uh, when Zolpidem is uh, given, some of the patients develop these kind of very peculiar automatic behaviors. They talk on the phone, they ring up somebody, they talk on the phone, they do something or they have a cup of tea and they don't remember anything. So practically um, like somnambulism. This happens with Zolpidem. You stop Zolpidem, it, it stops, start again, restart, give a challenge. Again, it, it has a problem. So Zolpidem is being used by a lot of uh, other specialists. So if a patient comes with these kind of complaints, maybe should be taken seriously. It may be a drug-related thing. Or otherwise also, it is quite common. People can wash their laundry, put the clothes to drying, and then go back, go back and sleep. And without remembering what has happened, and wondering next day morning who washed them and who put them for drying. To that Blank staring face, relatively unresponsive to awakening. Short period of some confusion and disorientation when woken up, no recollection. Usually in children between ages of 4 and 8, 
peak, peak prevalence is around 12 years of age, more common in boys, tends to run again in families. About 15% of children have an occasional episode. Consultation is usually after an injury occurs. Either they fall or they do something which either injures themselves or somebody else. Then a consultation occurs. So again, the question is reassurance, minimize triggers, keep environment safe so that they don't injure themselves or something will happen. Medication as per night terrors. The same kind of clonazepam, peroxetine kind of things can be given. This is exactly what happens. They open the fridge, they eat something. Sometimes children usually uh, they move around and uh, they don't understand. And when in, it happens with adults, they may do more complicated maneuvers or uh, actions and they don't re realize. Just to keep you awake, uh, this lady asks, like, doctor, can you prescribe something to stop me from sleepwalking? The doctor says, no, you need the exercise because either diabetes or hypertension. So at least walk in the sleep. So no medication is done. So sleep talking. I think 90% uh, of people here would have done this. Or 100% maybe. Okay. You ask any mother, any mother of whatever age, uh, whether her children talked in sleep or not, she will say 100%. And if you ask her, when did they do that? Most of them will tell that something happened in the school, either good or bad. A, a prize was given or a dance performance took place. And that night, definitely, there is sleep talking. 100%. So, very, very benign condition. It's found in all stages of sleep, actually. Even during light sleep. <laughs> Talking usually involves a few words that are difficult to distinguish. Uh, even small, young children as uh, young as one year, one and a half years also blabber, basically. Sometimes, very clear cut. Very, even in a few sentences also, it is as if reliving uh, a thing. Episodes of sleep talking sometimes accompany night terrors and sleepwalking because basically they are related to uh, each other due to NREM phenomena. Sleep talking alone requires absolutely no treatment. Again, reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. Basically, parasomnias are not an illnesses which require treatment with medication. Since they happen in children, the parents are extremely worried if it becomes too much. So, these kind of somnambulism and sleep talking in children come to psychiatrists or a neurologist or a, uh, a pediatrician. When the children are sent to hostel in 5th uh, standard or 8th standard or 10th uh, standard or 11th standard, they go to and they suddenly there, somebody notices these things. And the parents are called and this is what is happening. Or the, the child is uh, made uh, to feel ashamed um, by either bullying or uh, commenting or criticizing. That is when the children are brought by the parents for something to be done about this. You know this, this is a classical the exaggerated way of sleep talking that is uh, shown. And I think it is what uh, some... Uh, what film it is, uh, Chennai Express. Now there is something called confusional arousals. These are again during slow wave sleep, unresponsive to external stimuli, semi-purposive movements like handling or searching objects, like somebody may just take it or somebody may just hold uh, the partner's throat and uh, eating inappropriately. They go, like for example, in somnambulism, they go there and uh, they eat raw meat only or whatever is there. They may eat just uh, uh, the, the atta, if it is there, just just like that without uh, understanding. And then they may wonder who, who ate all these things uh, the next day. Even performing sex, sex has been noticed. He performs sex and uh, sleeps off and next day morning doesn't have any idea that he has uh, performed sex. 
So again, confusional arousals for a short period of time, whatever he does, he doesn't remember. Fortunately, they are not very, very common because the partner uh, faces the brunt of uh, these attacks because they may injure themselves or create a lot of problems. If there is a something, a knife or something, they may they think that it is a, a, a an apple or a tomato, they may try to push it. These things have, have happened. These things uh, have been reported and uh, legal complications have occurred. Divorces have occurred because of these things. So these things are important. Bruxism is another thing, which is the underreported probably. Uh, 5 to 10 percent of population uh, has this. Basically, it is teeth grinding, loud noise. They create noise. And the people who are sleeping nearby, they hear the noise. Their sleep gets disturbed. But the person doesn't remember that he has bruxism. Produce noticeable damage to teeth. Basically, ultimately end up with uh, dentists and uh, some kind of a uh, covering is given to them if they can't uh, be cured, which they are supposed to uh, put it on their teeth like uh, dentures. And uh, basically, they come to us or to go to a dentist because they have jaw ache or they get headache. And when it becomes repeatedly too much, they seek consultation. Bed partners and roommates cons consistently awakened by the sound. Treatment consists of a dental bite plate. More during stress. Again, all these things are more during stress. Lifestyle changes are again advocated for all these things. Like have a good exercise. Don't drink too much coffee or tea. Don't drink alcohol. Don't use nicotine. Be comfortable. Have mindfulness. They are supposed to cure most of these things. Then there is something called sleep starts and jerks. Because this again happens when it happens in children. Uh, parents become a little panicky and uh, they come to consultation. Because suddenly the child is speaking almost like a myoclonic jerks or something. It happens and generally goes away. Common even in healthy people, even in adults, it is seen common suddenly. Like for example, your wife is sleeping next door to you. You just, uh, it, it, it uh, almost like a punching, you know, boxing kick it becomes. And suddenly she awakes. And uh, what has happened? No, no, nothing. This man doesn't even know that he has moved. So that kind of a thing, again, when it happens too frequently, they come to consultation. Again, reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. Coming back to nightmares, who has not experienced a nightmare? Who has not experienced a very, very bad dream? Everybody, recurrently, at least 10 times, 50 times, all of us have experienced some kind of it. And when it, when it disturbs so much, very, very common amongst all the healthy people, happens, now this happens in REM sleep. Usually happens in the later half of the night. Like if you sleep at 10 o'clock, maybe it, it happens after 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning. Very distressing dreams usually can be recurrent. When awakened, they are oriented. Unlike night terrors, they are not awake. They are confused. They are, they are totally disoriented. It is difficult to make them awake in night terrors. Whereas here... They can easily be awakened. They are fully oriented, not confused at all. They remember the dream and most of them remember the dream very, very vividly. They can, these dreams are in technicolor, multicolors, in three-dimensional uh, things. And they can even, the exact uh, things that happened during that dream, they can remember. That is what makes them absolutely so fearful. It is again quite familial. Again, so there are certain uh, things which run in families. So there is a genetic predisposition for this. Why occasionally normal people they have written? I have put that because not occasionally. This is quite frequently seen in normal people. Basically, emotional stress, fatigue, fever, frightening shows or stories, they can trigger. Uh, nightmares. Like especially children, 
if they see some bhoot kind of movies or they read something uh, harry potter like uh, quite possibly if you uh, see harry potter maybe you you are likely to have children are likely to have nightmares again during ptsd or anxiety or depression again they, they are more basically what reassurance 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 education is really psychological therapy avoid precipitating factors if your sleep is not of good quality then you improve the quality of the sleep systematic desensitization from whatever has happened nothing is going to happen because some bad omens happen during that sleep and then they are disturbed for the next one month or so something is going to happen something is going to happen that probably you can desensitize rem suppressant drugs like any tricyclic imipramine or not triptyline or even benzodiazepine generally we don't advocate benzodiazepine for any of these things because of the habit forming possibility because these can be quite chronic problems and you never and on invariably the benzodiazepine dose keeps on increasing spontaneous remissions are very very common nightmares occur for a few days and suddenly they disappear next one is sleep paralysis some of these people come they are extremely worried they they are they are they are scared to the extent that they go to a lot of people they get a lot of examinations done and nothing comes out of it all investigations are bound to be normal 100% normal this happens when waking from sleep fully awake fully conscious oriented but can't move any of my limbs I'm totally paralyzed it causes tremendous amount of fear this is exactly for all psychiatrists i can tell you this when you give sufficient and sufficient amount of scoline and less amount of thiopentone during ect procedure this is exactly what happens to patients and those people who have experienced this will refuse next ect that is that is a, a problem okay so you can't do anything you can't move and you are fully awake you can't call you can you can't talk you can't shout that that becomes a major problem nearly 3% people are supposed to have at some point of time comorbidity is usually anxiety and depression it is usually a rem end phenomena just waking up just about to wake up shift sleep deprivation can precipitate these things shift work shift sleep so good sleep habits are a norm here as treatment reassurance again ssris are supposed to help in this the best part is you touch them like this gone is is a miracle like sleep paralysis people sleep paralyzed just touch just just slap them on the leg or hand they become fully fully functional instantaneously don't know uh, what could be the reason or something but uh, i was quite skeptical about this but couple of patients whom i i had the occasion to see during my career as a psychiatrist uh, this this appears to be very true because uh, their their own partners tell like one person used to tell his wife used to have uh, sleep paralysis on and off and he, he, they themselves had found out what could be he just slaps her she becomes fine so um, initially when when she said i, I thought there must be some dissociative phenomena or something but uh, doesn't appear to be that because this is what is reported across the world also now rem behavior disorders are the next uh, in the rem compartment violent complex short behaviors at night often several episodes during one night we can wake the subject because nrem it is any phenomena in nrem it is difficult to wake the subject but in rem phenomena you just slap him or shake him or call him he will wake up here probably he remembers a dream quite often whatever has happened very vivid violent unpleasant dreams they have during these episodes shouting violent sudden movements grasping punching knocking falling they may suddenly fall from the uh, bed when uh, trying to get up or jump from there or something 
and again the partner is going to suffer uh, sometimes and you may get injured they themselves get injured but the partner also may get injured confused for a short period distressed and very remorseful they feel extremely bad about what they did or what happened the best part is it happens in men usually after 50 years and uh, associated generally with future parkinsons or levy body dementia it, it is almost a precursor as dr uday was mentioning earlier in the morning also the new neurodegenerative disease uh, can be predicted with rem behavior disorders maybe in the next 4 or 5 years time these people are likely to develop this kind of uh, problems diagnosis again clinical basically and polysomnography ssris tcas make it worse all the other parasomnias tcas and ssris help if you give paroxetine or imipramine or not reptilin they do well but here they become worse provide a safe environment for the partner and for this person so the usual standard uh, teaching is remove the common bed put two beds in the same room slightly away so he doesn't uh, harm the partner and uh, put some padding on the floor so he will not injure himself no sharp objects around so that he will not do because they grasp or do some things so this and clonazepam pump may help in some of these individuals not very uh, definite but it can help again sleep hygiene probably plays a little bit of a role nothing much actually can be done with rem behavior disorders hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations either while we are about to go to sleep or when we are about to come out of sleep we are still not awake during that time it happens they vividly see some things or hear some things usually most most often it is auditory as if somebody is calling or somebody is talking or somebody is shouting or some some objects they see but within a within a minute or so they become awake they are gone they, they and they, again harmless benign no problem is needed quality of sleep improved they disappear so reassurance helping them to uh, get a good quality of sleep restless leg syndrome sometimes goes to a neurophysician sometimes to come to us again a very difficult uh, kind of a problem to treat it's also called as ichbom syndrome common it frequently undiagnosed uncomfortable restlessness in legs on lying down it is almost like our akathisia kind of thing and uh, irresistible urge to move legs as soon as they sleep on the bed they start thrashing around uh, their legs relieved by movement of legs treatment clonazepam gabapentin pramipexol clonidine all are supposed to help whichever helps trial and error that will help and uh, you can't do much about it because this is a, a chronic kind of condition unfortunately we don't have so generally they have extreme sleep disturbance insomnia because when their legs are not uh, sleeping they can't sleep Many other conditions also have been described under the heading of parasomnias. Not included all of them. Sleep apneas themselves are a, a subject matter for a lecture independently. So parasomnias are extremely, extremely common phenomena. By and large, either they get better with what they, what we do, or uh, within a short period of time. or they don't get better and then uh, they are going to be a chronic problem with us and when it, they become chronic they keep on meeting various doctors and things like that otherwise most of them are extremely treatable without medication they will have to be explained educated about what is a good sleep and what are the parameters for a good sleep and that is the most important drugs are not most important but unfortunately parasomnia has created so much disturbance and distress to lot of people but because of 
non awareness of these conditions people don't come forward to seek help and we also don't ask like how many how many of us even ask about parasomnias to our patients and if you ask like because because anybody who has anxiety related disorders and depressive disorders more number of these people are likely to have parasomnias one or the other and we don't even ask so it is our business also to ask because they are easy they are they are easy to tick the we only tell okay this is what is happening tick so i am dreaming a lot i don't even ask like is, is it a nightmare or possible nightmare or something okay you add a little more of benzodiazepine and send them that's what what generally we do probably uh, we also required to take uh, a step back ask something and uh, reduce our drugs so parasomnias are something which i have experienced which i know everyone i know has experienced so nothing great about it they are going to stay with us you all listen take care of your own parasomnias and help other people who are likely to have parasomnias in your family or in your practice thank you thank you very much hello sir excellent speech i could not say during your speech because i was <laughs> going through the deep here about all these things and i definitely were experience these things in our lifetime okay thank you very much uh, any questions sir uh, in the stress the stress uh, lateral stress syndrome on the rest uh, many times they use iron deficiency in the brain or even b12 deficiency they also and many times uh, what i found that some of the psychiatrists in humans they prescribe uh, anti parkinsons uh, uh, drugs also for this this just i want to try we sure sir they sir when we they are not on uh, this thing antipsychotics prescribing anti parkinsonism drugs is a little uh, tricky otherwise no problem what you say is perfectly valid sir one more question yes. uh, when we parasomnias are more commonly seen in uh, the clinical psychiatry uh, night, night nightmares somnambulism if you are practicing child psychiatry somnolocky somnambulism are more frequently and uh, rem behavior disorders are seen very very frequently if you are doing a lot of geriatric uh, practice very very difficult to treat frustrating uh, as it is dementias are frustrating as it is something parkinson plus so common in parkinson plus a very very difficult extremely the only thing i have uh, with a lot of give and take and uh, this thing with geriatric psychiatry in nimans uh, with matthew and uh, others what we have realized is probably a bit of lonazepam and uh, aripiprazole additionally with donepezil and memantin sometimes helps sometimes uh, things like vitamin e um, they all non specific things uh, nothing uh, special so very very frustrating very frustrating Any some specific drugs which are causing so-called parasomnia, especially nightmares? Sir, if you are taking benzodiazepines and uh, or tricyclics, and if you abruptly stop, they are hundred percent you are going to. That that invariably your patients come and tell, I have too many because REM suppression drugs. The minute you remove them, just hits you back uh, in a rebound. so we we'll, that is the reason why we require to be very careful about uh, this thing the same thing also happens nowadays with desvanlafaxin when you suddenly even 50 mg tablet when you suddenly stop or patient themselves stop they have discontinuation syndrome and one of the aspects of discontinuation syndrome is having very very bad sleep uh, experiences and which may contain uh, uh, nightmares what is anything i like about to 
paradoxical insomnia. They can actually. They can. Uh, benzodiazepines themselves can uh, cause paradoxical yeah. insomnia. There's no no question about it. So that's why, na, like some in some places, uh, we have to think in terms of out of the box uh, kind of thing. Even uh, in some patients may benefit with uh, trazodone or mirtazapine or uh, even clozapine. Very small doses of clozapine are advocated. Like for example, you were asking um, dementia related REM behavioral disorders. Very, very small doses of clozapine, like for example, uh, 6.25 milligram and uh, things like that are supposed to be useful. Mirtazapine, again, a drug at a lower dose gives a good relief, at a higher dose, maybe 30 45 milligram, you won't sleep at all. That, that is the kind of thing. So, we'll have to be a little awake, alert while prescribing, also. We, we also require to. Thank you very much for your work. The Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yeah. Sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, we had seen a middle aged patient, sir, who was brought by his wife with complaint of uh, heat riding, sir, that season during the night. He was actually preoccupied with this thought that he has sleep disturbances because of that season, sir. So he was in distress because of this. So, how do you approach such cases? No, that's what I told. He must be having. He has bruxism. Bro he has bruxism. Yeah, but he was preoccupied with that thought, sir. No, no. He has preoccupied. He has every business to be preoccupied. That is why reassurance that is not a major illness. And second thing is, the bruxism is not going to go away just like that. So some of them it is a chronic condition. Some of them may require uh, the dental plates or something. That is the second thing is, and educate him to uh, improve his quality of. Uh, sleep. Most of these people have a very poor quality of sleep. Like if you ask me what is my quality of sleep, I will rate it as uh, pretty poor. Because whatever we are uh, supposed to be not be doing, uh, we do, all of us here. I, I really wonder if there is any exception here. See, we do, uh, how many of us actually walk uh, or do a moderate kind of exercise? How many of us practice mindfulness? How many of us uh, um, drink tea or coffee extremely moderately? How many of us uh, don't abuse one or the other substance, especially nicotine, alcohol, or even once in a while also? Like, for example, alcohol is going to produce sleep disturbance probably for the next 8 to 10 days, even after one drinking session. Um, the 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 rhythm to come back may take about 8 days or 10 days or something like that. By that time, again, something will happen. We don't um, stick to our uh, schedules of sleep um, roughly. The easiest is to getting up at right time. At least that we should be doing. We don't do that also. And sometimes we nap. Sometimes you are sitting somewhere in the car or the bus, you nap. Everything is bound to this thing. So when we do all these things, knowing fully, and of course, the... Mobile and uh, iPad and laptop, they are legend now. There is no question about it. So, uh, the best thing for your patient is increase quality of sleep. Give him some amount of it. Maybe you can try paroxetine because I was also quite surprised when uh, a few months back when I read paroxetine. One dose supposed to be so useful. I don't know how can it be useful because it's basically an SSRI. I don't know. I, I have not an occasion to try still. Mm -hmm. uh, see, you, you also try and see. Maybe uh, benzodiazepines may not be the right choices. Like some something like mirtazapine or something might work. So, trazodone is a drug which practically most of the juniors may not even be aware that uh, such a drug exists. And uh, that is another uh, good alternative to this thing. Even antihistaminics, like something like uh, or uh, what is atarax, what is it called? Lower, um, uh, so even 10 milligram atarax itself might help when when benzodiazepines don't help. Basically, histamine, antihistamine. So out of the box treatment schedules have to be this thing. But most important is more important is non-pharmacological than pharmacological. Melatonin really, 
your body uh, deepak was talking about melatonin see melatonin is uh, uh, manufactured in our body there is no problem about that unless it is a jet lag or something you want to give uh, in additional dose of melatonin earlier uh, otherwise uh, additional melatonin i really wonder in my practice i have not found it useful honestly either for insomnia or any any other sleep related disorder i have not found it useful jet lag yes 100% this is good it helps additional as an adjunct drug with other drugs maybe melatonin might be worth it sir now fortunately dexamphetamine is not available fortunately <laughs> now methylphenidate is <laughs> people take methylphenidate now but they do also the, the commonest i told you na no, like zolpidem zolpidem sometimes causes sir modafinil how will it help in somnambulism it won't it will uh, make you more alert Yeah, daytime sleep. Sir, daytime sleep, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah. narcolepsy, the drug of choice, sir. Our modafinil is the drug of choice. We, I, I have two psychiatry friends who had uh, narcolepsy, and uh, they said that modafinil made their career and life absolutely wonderful. Before that, they had very, very great difficulty. One more question, sir. Night terrace in the Sir, night terrors, kinta no. It is basically nightmares more often occurs, nightmares. and also all sorts of sleep disturbances occur in withdrawal. Any withdrawal, benzodiazepine withdrawal, alcohol withdrawal, anywhere the GABA is not there, that is it's removed, and uh, glutamate overactivity toxicity is there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for the time informative session. Now I request the chairperson to please.